Hi guys, maybe the third time is a charm. It is a spectacularly gorgeous day here in the end times in paradise in East Bumblefuck, New Mexico, here in the end times on Sunday, February 5th, 2017, I believe. It's, I don't know, maybe 72 degrees outside. And so I'm taking a break in my various, various end times chores, getting ready for the shit storm that Donald Trump is unleashing in this country and on this planet. So I'm going to take a break and share with you this humorous little piece I found in Bloomberg. We're going to, oh shit, my battery's about gone. I'm going to read a little bit of this article. You go, go, go get the bugs. You go get that bug. We're having a locust invasion in February here in the end time. So anyway, what is on the mind of Bloomberg this week? Worried about the apocalypse? Here's a shopping guide. So Bloomberg is offering a shopping guide in the uh, in the end time. So this is a spinoff about that story, you know, thanks to Donald Trump how the, the the bulletin of the atomic scientist has pushed the uh, the first week of Donald Trump's presidency has pushed the end times clock 30 seconds closer till midnight uh, as Donald Trump's intemperate statements factored into that thinking I bet Nobody likes to contemplate catastrophes, nuclear not, nuclear or not, which is why we are woefully unready for them. A 2016 survey by the National Center for Disaster Preparedness at Columbia University found out that only one-third of American households have an adequate plan of emergency. I would be absolutely flabbergasted if one third of Americans have a plan for an for emergency. What is your plan right now? Okay. So what does being ready for an emergency mean? Okay. First, talk with your family about who will meet the kids at school and who will go to the nursing home to get grandma. Another key step is to pack what experts call a bug out bag with emergency essentials. Uh, you can even throw a bug out party to get ideas. I have no idea what this means. You can even throw a bug out party to get ideas, dash, <coughs> cough, condoms, <coughs> cough, from friends and neighbors, I have no idea what that means, says Cham Dallas, director of the Institute for Disaster Management at the University of Georgia's College of Public Health. And, uh, yep, and so they break it down here talking to this person and Michael Colston, a former EMT who blogs about outbreaks in readiness. Okay, but the, the, the whole first half of, of well, the, the first part of the story anyway, and I'm going to come back to this with my own story about East Bumblefuck, New Mexico, but what is the number one no-shit Sherlock rule in your plan for emergency? Uh, and that would be a home away from home away from home. Big cities are big targets. The best place to be if society goes south is a couple of steps removed in a town on the edge of a small city. And I would take it one step further as I have here in East Bumblefuck. 
Um, unless you connect with a group, you're not going to protect yourself and you won't help anybody else, else either. Here are some spots where you might want to look for a summer home. So, so what they're saying about this is, for instance, if you live in New York City, maybe you want to be looking at Albany. If you're in Albany, maybe you want to be looking at Saratoga Springs. And again, I would take this the, the, this farther. So they look at, you know, the farther you can get away from a big city, the better your chance that you and your family will survive whatever form the shit storm takes. Get the hell out of Dodge, but you need to have a plan of where you're going to. And the number one rule. Uh, talking about this, as I say, I'm, I'm going to come back and do the second half of this rant about my own adventures here in East Bumblefuck, the lessons I am learning about uh, getting the hell out of Dodge. Uh, leaving home is a last resort. If the house is on fire, if the creek is rising, if the neighborhood has devolved into chaos or anarchy, if Donald Trump is on the telephone spouting off his horse shit, stirring up shit with everyone from Muslims to the Chinese to the Mexicans to the Iranians, uh, anyway, these are reasons to leave. This is why, well, one of the many reasons I left Austin, Texas on January 16th, 2017. I got my ass out of Austin, Texas, heading to East Bumblefuck. Okay, but uh, this is now, you can take it with you. Well, some of it. Yes, pack enough to get by for 72 hours, but not so much that your bug out bag is impossible to carry. So this is Bloomberg's recommendations to pack your bug out bag. Sancho, come here. Get, get out of that garden. Come on now. One thing, you do not want to take them to the end times, probably especially if you're going to have a garden, is one of these little one of these little bug out guys. Not good for an organic garden. All right, the bug out bag. Uh, so it gives it actually gives a, a list of, of products, how much they cost, and then for water, water is heavy. So what you want to buy is not no so much water is a water fil filter. There you go, a water filter and a little bottle of, of bleach to, uh, to help filter, you know, to help chlorinate water. Uh, number one, the number one item in your bug out bag, water. Then LED flashlights. One of these little headlamps might not be a bad idea. Don't forget food. And they give some uh, recommendations for emergency food ration bars. They give three, uh, they give three recommendations. Okay, I, I just need to go down the list. I guess I do have a bag which is not uh, very full. I do not have a water filter with me. I do have a flashlight. I don't have a headlamp. I have virtually no, n none of these like emergency food ration bars. Uh, canned food works a little bit. I would say if, if everything went south right now, especially since the garden's not in, I could live right now here in East Bumblefuck for what I have in the kitchen 
I could probably make it four to six weeks before I would starve to death. Uh, a hand crank radio. I do not own a hand crank radio. Uh, a whistle. A whistle. You'll need this to signal for help if you're trapped or threatened. Right. I do not have a whistle. Here is map and compass. You may not be able to rely on your little GPS bullshit to get around. Uh, I do have a map of the area. I do not own a compass. Here is a multi-tool. They recommend the Leatherman Wave. I love this one for anyone who has witnessed I think I've had three can opener rants for the end times. Leatherman Wave, $91, the first and number one rule of the tool kit for the end times is a can opener. A can opener. If you uh, do not if you want to see what it's going to look like in the end times and you don't have a can opener, I think you can go in and look at a couple of my rants. Um, I love this. Distractions. Uh, they're suggesting you, you get something called an Uno for your kids. Uh, I don't have any idea what a fucking Uno is, probably because I don't have any kids. Water shoes. There you go. I do not own water shoes. Blanket. One of these Mylar blankets. I used to own a Mylar blanket, but no more. I do not own a Mylar blanket. First aid kit. My first aid kit has gone the way of the dead. I do not own a first aid kit. Compression bandages. Uh, I do not own compression bandages. Medication. Keep at least a seven-day supply and copies. Supply and up-to-date copies of you, of your prescriptions. Like like there's really going to be a, a, a goddamn pharmacy. Like CVS Pharmacy is really going to be filling some prescriptions in the end times. Cash up to one thousand dollars in cash and small bills is good if you can spare it but more is not necessarily better all you're going to be is a resource for somebody to take it away from you yes and i and i got a real chuckle out of this last one photocopies the last item in your bug out bag to survive the anarchy and collapse of global industrial civilization is contact information for doctors, insurance companies, as well as IDs, credit cards, bank account information, and hard to place documents. Paper is good, so is putting this information on a flash drive. I forgot to bring my bullshit detector button out here. So anyway, guys, this is Bloomberg's advice. Bloomberg's advice on, ha on how to handle the coming shitstorm as Donald Trump pushes the, the doomsday clock closer and closer. So anyway, as I say, I've been out here since January 17th now. And uh, mainly what I'm doing out here is taking advantage of this global warming of these 70-something degree days in February. I guess it's going to be 78 here, 78 degrees here in East Bumblefuck in a few days. But first, you know, people are wondering, where is East Bumblefuck, New Mexico? And... Uh, this really plays in to the first part that, that Bloomberg was talking about. Uh, 
So we're going to start with the closest big city. I'm halfway between Albuquerque, New Mexico, and, and, and El Paso, Texas. And if there's anybody from El Paso, Texas listening to this video, if I had to pick one city, certainly in the United States, that you don't want to be anywhere near with the shitstorm that's coming down the pike thanks to Donald Trump edging the doomsday clock ever closer to midnight. It is El Paso, Texas, which is already one of the pits of hell in this country, you know, sitting right there uh, next to Juarez, Mexico. But anybody not packing their bags in El Paso, Texas today, uh, I recommend you look at those little ash figures from, uh, where was it, uh, Pompeii, Italy. You know, when, that, when the volcano blew and they were sitting there drinking their morning cup of tea going, what volcano? Uh, the volcano is getting ready to blow in El Paso. So, so from El Paso, the, the, minimally you want to get your ass to Las Cruces, New Mexico. But anyone who's ever been to Las Cruces, New Mexico will realize that the zombie apocalypse will be quite alive and well. In, uh, in Las Cruces, so then maybe you want to get the hell out of Dodge more and go to Truth or Consequences, New Mexico, where they do have a 24-hour Walmart. And as long, as long as the 24-hour Walmart holds together in Truth or Consequences, then maybe you'll survive there before the meth-addled zombie apocalypse and truth or consequences, New Mexico. Uh, I I anybody who thinks that a town like that is, is going to be a place to move to, although compared, compared to Las Cruces, it will be, and Las Cruces compared to El Paso, but I kept going. I am now 25 miles outside of truth or consequences, New Mexico. There is not one store between here and Walmart, 25 miles across the desert from East Bumblefuck. And uh, I, I think the population of this village of East Bumblefuck, I think it's around 30 or 40 people. I'm pretty sure. And uh, so I've been out here now for, uh, for about three weeks. I've put in my, my 30 potato plants. Uh, I've got, I've already got some turnips, the turnips and collards and mustard and spinach and snow peas that I planted in November seem to be in garlic, did I say, are coming up. I just planted yesterday, I planted broccoli, cabbage, lettuce, carrots, and cilantro. And I got all of those in my, uh, in my organic garden. But guys, you know, let's be honest. Let's be honest. Would I be able to live if, if tomorrow, if tomorrow, uh, it comes down in this country and on this planet and society crashes tomorrow, Monday, February 6, 2017, how long would I last in East Bumblefuck? Uh, that I wouldn't, how much longer would I last here in East Bumblefuck than I would in Truth or Consequences. How much longer will the people in Truth or Consequences survive than those in, in Las Cruces? And how much longer will the people in Las Cruces survive than those poor schmucks, especially on this side of the wall, uh, survive in El Paso, Texas when the shit goes down? 
Uh, I will put my bets on East Bumblefuck. But uh, I, I'm not a, a, a clueless fucking moron. I fully understand that. It, 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 am I... Am I prepared to deal with the shit that's coming down? And uh, the main lesson that I've learned while I'm waiting for my garden to grow uh, is th this is the main lesson that I've learned about living in East Mumblefuck, and that is the firewood lesson. That I, it, it, it's a damn desert. And, you know, if you can't depend on uh, propane delivery, and electricity. Uh, well, we need to get on some solar panels. We're still on the grid here, which is not good. But we do have a well with a hand pump. If the power goes out, I can go right out here to the hand pump and be getting getting water out of the ground. But uh, the firewood. So. This this is just one example that's not mentioned, and it and it's not even that cold where I am, especially during the warmest winter that anybody ever remembers having here. But but here's here's the deal on the firewood. We ran out of firewood. It act we actually ran out of firewood here the day before I got here, uh, and so we had to depend on the kindness of the neighbors. So the neighbors. Uh, have been supplying us and the other neighbors. So we ran out of firewood, the house next door to us ran out of firewood, and so the neighbors across the street saved our asses by letting us have some of their firewood. This is uh, what they talk about. You need to find a small, close-knit community with neighbors taking care of neighbors. Now, would these neighbors have been so neighborly in, in time of, of societal collapse. I don't know if they would have or not. But the, the thing about the firewood here in East Bumblefuck is, is, is the closest firewood here, not counting cottonwood, which is pretty worthless, is it's at least minimally, minimally, you're going to have to drive up in the mountains for 15 miles. It, you know, you're going to need a gas-sucking truck, to get up to the mountains, for all intents and purposes, you're going to need a gas-sucking chainsaw to cut the firewood to bring it back in your in your uh, gas-sucking gas-sucking. No, you don't need to go. Don't bother with that little dog. He's a badass. He's not being very neighborly. This is the dog of the neighbors who who uh, lent us the firewood. But anyway, so. I, I, I found some firewood today, but I just want to tell this firewood story and, and wrap this up. And the firewood story is this, that I finally found some firewood. I finally found some, there is no firewood anywhere near East Bumblefuck anymore. It's gone by February. Everyone in this town is running out of firewood. And uh, so I finally found some, some firewood in Truth or Consequences, which is 25, which is a 50 mile round trip. I can carry in my little gas sucking truck about one fourth of a cord. So it's 50 miles round trip. So I need to put 200 miles to get one cord of one firewood. Uh, firewood. I need to put two hush. I need to put 200 miles on my gas sucking truck. And so I'm there this morning talking to the guy asking where he got the firewood in his big ass truck. Well, he had to drive 60 miles each direction, so 120. So he gets in his gas sucking truck. Okay takes a 120 mile round trip in his gas sucking, in his big gas sucking truck. He, he's got all of these gas powered chainsaws to cut, to cut the wood when he's out there in the wood lot, 60 miles from the truth or consequences. He brings it home and he has a gasoline powered log splitter. So he splits the, so it's gone through his gas sucking truck, his gas sucking chainsaw, his gas sucking, uh, his gas sucking 
a log splitter, he's already has 120 miles uh, on his truck, and then I have to put 200 miles on a gas sucking truck to get one cord worth uh, of fuel for the wood stove. And, you know, when you start thinking about this, guys, uh, the, the, the end times is not going to be pretty. And perhaps I, I you know, uh, I'm still being naive. I'm 57 years old. Even with Donald Trump in the White House, I am holding on to this notion that people my age, 57 years old and older, that we're going to get out of this with the screen door just bumping up against our asses. Uh, I get less and less sure of this but between, between climate change on one side and, and, and Donald Trump on the other. I'm not, I, I'm not at the Guy McPherson level yet. But uh, things are speeding up on this planet, and you and I both need to be putting our little bug out bags together. But if anybody is thinking for one minute that your fucking little bug out bag from Bloomberg's, your 72 hour bug out bag, that's what it's going to buy you. If you were lucky, you were going to buy yourself 72 hours. What? the fuck are you going to do on the 73rd hour? Uh, what are you going to do when that gas tank runs out? You know, this other article I should have flagged about, uh, I've mentioned this place, they, they find they're sold out, this place in Kansas, this old missile silo that's been developed for these these damn one percenters where they're selling these underground bunkers to these to like billionaires three million dollars to buy an underground bunker out in the middle of Kansas sold out and uh, you better damn well believe the uh, the global elite the one percenters uh, know goddamn well what's coming down on this planet and uh, you know they're heading underground Elon Musk and Leonardo DiCaprio they're heading to Mars and uh, I'm headed to well I've already gotten here to East Bumblefuck New Mexico uh, sticking some organic potatoes in the ground and stocking up on firewood while I still have the fossil fuels to do so but, uh, who am I kidding? Who am I kidding thinking uh, that East Bumblefuck, New Mexico? Uh, guys, you cannot run. You cannot hide. You can buy yourself 72 hours with your little bug out bag. You might be able to buy yourself even up to three months by moving to East Bumblefuck. Maybe you can buy yourself uh, another few weeks by, by buying your little physical silver dollars. Bill Burr had a hilarious r routine about that. Uh, about these goddamn clueless fucking morons acting like they are going to escape the the shit storm flying around this planet by investing in physical silver yeah how many how many comments has I, has I gotten hand bun unless you want to turn your your two thousand silver dollars into two thousand bullets uh, they ain't gonna do you a damn bit of good so uh, I don't know guys we are so fucked and you've got my sympathy and you've got Bloomberg's advice of how to go shopping for the apocalypse but I'm going to wrap up this uh, little peek into the end times rant and what am I going to do?
Maybe go plant some more snow peas for the collapse. Bye, guys. What are you doing to plan for the apocalypse, little dog?